now we will discuss about the anatomical points of the lung and the different part of the lung. So, this is the viscera of the lung with the parietal pleura or pulmonary pleura. The apex, this is a conical part and directed upwards. The base, which is concave and semilunar in shape, directed downwards. The anterior border of the lung is thin, sharp and which is directed anteriorly and slightly medially. The medial surface of the lung is marked by hilum, which is directed medially. Now the parts of the lung. The lung has apex which is conical and which extends from upwards from the impression of the first rib and its coastal cartilage and directed upwards. And the base which is directed downwards, semilunar in shape and concave. Now the border. It has two, three borders. The first one, the thin anterior border and the blunt posterior border and the posterior border is also rounded. The inferior border of the lung which is semi lunar in shape. Okay, this one is the inferior border. Now the lobe. The lobe in base of the right lung it has three lobe. This one is the superior lobe, this one is the middle lobe and this one is the inferior lobe. In case of the left lung, it has two lobe, the superior lobe and the inferior lobe. Now the fissure. In the right lung, it has two fissure. One is the oblique fissure and another one is the horizontal fissure. But in case of the left lung, it has only one fissure that is oblique fissure. Now the, dis uh, now the surfaces. It has coastal surface which is uh, which is lies under the ribs and their intercostal space so this one is the coastal surface and here this one is the medial medial surface and this one is the inferior surface base is also called inferior surface in the medial surface it is again divided into two parts the anterior part which is known as the mediastinal surface and the posterior narrow part which is known as the vertebral surface. The medial surface is marked by a impression or a structure which is known as the hilum of the lung. It is the important feature of the medial surface. Now come to the description. The apex of the lung. The apex of the lung here there is the impression of the first rib and with their postal cartilages. The apex of the lung extends from the first rib and which is directed upwards and uh, it is 2.5 cm above the apex of the, post, uh, the apex of the lung it is 2.5 cm from the medial end of the sternoclavicular joint and it is uh, 3 to 4 cm above from the first coastal cartilages. The apex of the lung is covered by the cervical pleura and externally it is protected by an another musculoaponeurotic structure which is known as the suprapleural membrane or Simpson's fascia. Now the base. The base of the uh, two lung if we compare it the base of the right lung is more concave than the base of the left lung because of presence of the liver. Here uh, there is relation with the bases. In the right lung, the base of the right lung is related with the thoracic surface of the diaphragm. Beneath the diaphragm, here presence of the right lobe of liver. And relation of the base of the left lung, it is also it is also related with the thoracic surface of the diaphragm. And beneath the diaphragm, it is related with the fundus of the stoma, spleen, and part of the left lobe of the liver. Now the surfaces, the coastal surface. The coastal surface, it has uh, it is related with the ribs. So the impression, uh, the impression of the ribs and the elevated portion 
are for the intercostal space okay here there is impression of the ribs and this elevated portion is the impression this elevated portion is the intercostal space now the medial surface here the medial surface we know it has two part the anterior uh, mediastinal part and posterior vertebral part this posterior vertebral part is related with the upper 10th thoracic vertebra with their intervertebral discs. Now the mediastinal surface. We know the mediastinal surface it, it is marked by the hilum and the structure which pass through the hilum is known as the root of the lung. And there are several impression of some viscera which is present in the uh, mediastinal surface. Now uh, it's important to know the arrangement of the root of the lung. Here we can see the tough structure or hard structure which represent the bronchus. Why it is hard? Because uh, it is uh, it is made up of hyaline cartilage. So the structure is hard. In the right lung, the bronchus is again divided into two parts. The upper part is known as the aparterial bronchus and the lower part is known as the hyperterial bronchus. But in the left lung, in the left lung, it is only the left principal bronchus. Okay, in the left lung, it is only left principal bronchus. Now the arrangement. The arrangement uh, from here we can see the other structure also. Uh, first we have know the structure, then we will uh, discuss about the arrangement. This is structure. This is pulmonary artery and this is structure this is pulmonary vein okay how i will able to understand this is pulmonary artery because we know the arterial wall is the thick okay and the vein the venous wall is the thin and uh, it's a remain collapsed uh, condition okay so this is the pulmonary vein so this one is the pulmonary artery and this one is the pulmonary vein in the left lung it is also uh, this one is the pulmonary artery as the wall uh, is thick and this one is the pulmonary vein and this is left principal bronchus. Now the arrangement. So arrangement uh, from uh, before backward, uh, we can remember it uh, by the mnemonic uh, V VAB. V -A -B. So for the V, it represents the pulmonary vein. Then uh, A, B A A for which is pulmonary artery okay and b for bronchus so before backward the arrangement is almost same in the both lung pulmonary vein pulmonary artery and then the bronchus here we can also see before backward this is anterior border so before before means from the anterior to the posterior pulmonary vein pulmonary artery and then the bronchus now the arrangement from above downward above downward uh, we can remember it by mnemonic, Bangla mnemonic, Bronku, Amar, Boro, Vai, in case of the right lung. Bronku, Bronku means bronchus. This one is the aparterial bronchus. Amar, Amar means artery, that is pulmonary artery. Boro means again bronchus, so hyperterial bronchus. Vai means vein, so pulmonary vein. So the arrangement above downward, aparterial bronchus pulmonary artery then hyperterial bronchus then the pulmonary vein in case of the right lung and now in case of the left lung arrangement above downward ami bronchus vai ami that is pulmonary artery bronchus that is left principal bronchus vai means vein that is pulmonary vein so these are the arrangement of the root of the lung here we have this area this area is known as the hilum of the lung through which the root enter and emerges from the lung the hilum is actually the non peritoneal area uh, beneath the root of the lung here there is a extension here there is a extension of a pleura actually the bilaminar fold of the mediastinal pleura this is the bilaminar fold of the mediastinal pleura and this structure is known as the pulmonary ligament this pulmonary ligament it makes a dead space and this this ligament allows the pulmonary vein when the pulmonary vein is distended during exercise we know the venous wall is thin and during exercise there is increased venous rate so the venous wall is distended and this pulmonary ligament allow the 
uh, allow this distension of the pulmonary vein and it also allow the descent of the root of the lung okay during inspiration by the contraction of the diaphragm when the diaphragm contract this uh, lung root also descend okay so it's also uh, allow the descent of the lung root okay now there are some impression present on the mid intestinal surface what are they first of all here there is the impression okay this impression this is actually the cardiac impression this cardiac impression in the right lung it is produced by the right atrium okay it is produced by right atrium right auricle anterior surface of the right auricle okay and we know in the right atrium two vein open so above the cardiac impression this this impression above the cardiac impression this is known as the impression of superior vena cava and below uh, the uh, in the right uh, atrium uh, inferior vena cava drain so below the cardiac impression in the lower aspect it is the impression of the inferior vena cava okay uh, now uh, we know the superior vena cava is formed by the right and left brachiocephalic vein so in the right lung here the upper part it is the impression of the right brachiocephalic vein okay right brachiocephalic vein and behind uh, the behind this uh, vertical impression there is the impression of uh, trachea in front and the right uh, edges of the esophagus behind okay now uh, come to the left lung okay so i forget uh, impression here also uh, we know in the superior vena cava uh, ejagus vein uh, drain into the superior vena cava so here we can see a narrow arch okay narrow arch this narrow arch actually formed by the ejagus vein so it is the impression of the ejagus vein so this arch is the it is the arch of ejagus vein so what is the total impression here we can see this is cardiac impression which is formed by the right atrium right auricle okay and above this impression vertical impression it is called the superior vena cava and we know the superior vena cava is formed by the right and left brachiocephalic vein so in the right lung this is uh, impression of the right brachiocephalic vein and uh, beneath uh, and the, in the lower part of the cardiac impression right atrium we know it drained uh, by the inferior vena cava so it is the impression of the inferior vena cava here uh, there is impression of the trachea in front and impression of the esophagus behind and this it's make a arch here we can see a narrow arch it is the arch of ejagus vein so that's all about the right lung and now come to the impression of the left lung with distinal surface in the left lung this cardiac impression is deep somewhat deep and it is produced by the left ventricle and part of the right ventricle actually by the left ventricle okay and uh, we know uh, uh, in the right ventricle the pulmonary trunk arises from the right ventricle so here is a small impression uh, for the pulmonary trunk now uh, here it's a make a arch a prominent arch this arch is actually uh, the arch of ejagus vein okay so we should remember in the right lung there there are the venous structure and in the left lung uh, there are arterial structure so this is the arch of aorta this is arterial structure arch of aorta so before the arch of aorta this part is formed by the ascending aorta so this is the impression of ascending aorta this arch is formed by the arch of aorta and towards the vertebral part uh, this is the arch of the uh, this is the descending aorta okay this is the impression of descending aorta and we know there are three main branches of arch of aorta that these are the from the right to left brachiocephalic trunk then left uh, common carotid and left subclavian mnemonic b c s so right brachiocephalic trunk actually present uh, towards the right lung okay so that impression present in the right lung but here two impression present that is left common carotid artery impression of left common carotid artery in the apex then the impression of the left subclavian artery okay and uh, here uh, we can see the impression behind the subclavian artery here this is the impression of the esophagus okay esophagus uh, and 
uh, okay so this is the mediastinal surface now come to the fissure okay in the right line we can see uh, the first the oblique fissure where it origin the oblique fissure actually start from the mediastinal surface above the hilum here we can see the oblique fissure start from the mediastinal surface above the hilum then it uh, extend uh, okay uh, here a point this this fissure actually cut the posterior border at the level of the junction between the thoracic 3 and thoracic 4 vertebra okay so we can say the oblique fissure start from the mediastinal surface then it cut the posterior border at the level of the thoracic 3 and 4 vertebra then it uh, uh, descend downwards and forwards across the coastal surface okay along the feet intercostal space then it cut the then it cut the inferior border okay so this is the oblique fissure now come to the horizontal fissure the horizontal fissure it start uh, from the it start from the oblique fissure along the mid clavicular line and then it passes horizontally and it cut the anterior border of the lung so these are the, uh, the fissure and uh, here we can see the oblique fissure we separate the upper lobe of the lung from the lower lobe and the horizontal fissure we separate the upper lobe from the middle lobe okay now come to the border so we know uh, this thin okay this sharp thin border is actually the anterior border there are some difference in between the anterior border of the right lung and the left lung here we can see in case of the left lung the anterior border is not uh, almost straight it is notched in its lower part from the fourth uh, costal cartilage okay here it is notched this notch is known as the cardiac notch and in the lower part of the anterior border of the left lung here is a projected portion tongue like projection this is known as the lingula okay uh, so why this cardiac nose is present here because it is produced by the apex of the heart okay this cardiac nose is produced by the apex of the heart and here because we know uh, here is the impression of the left ventricle and the apex of the heart is produced by the left ventricle okay so this cardiac impression is produced by the uh, left ventricle of the heart and this anterior border of the lung but uh, here please have a look on the right lung this apex uh, this anterior border is the sharp and thin okay and we know the anterior border it is um, it is thin and sharp because it lies in between the thoracic wall and the mediastinum okay it is sharp and thin and there is a peritoneal reflection here uh, here is a costal um, pleura and here is a mediastinal pleura so it lies in between the reflection of the costal pleura and the mediastinal pleura okay and in case of the left lung in case of the left lung uh, here uh, here it is a deficit so here it's a more portion in between the uh, peritoneal reflection uh, in between the pleural reflection in between costal and the mediastinal reflection uh, and if uh, how it is uh, clinically uh, established if we focus on the lung so the lung sound will be the resonant when we come at that side the lung sound will be converted from resonant to the dull why it is dull because here is deficit of the lung tissue okay here is deficit of the lung tissue and the heart with its pericardium comes in in direct contact with the thoracic wall okay and uh, the pleura as well so the sound will be the dull in sound okay so that's all about the lung thank you